Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome back to the History AI Podcast, where we dive deep into the moments that shaped our world. I'm Chuck. And I'm Marco. Today, we're taking you back to September 8, 1863, to the waters of Sabine Pass a crucial confrontation during the American Civil War that's packed with strategy, bravery, and, believe it or not, a bit of humor amidst the cannon fire. Let's rewind the clock to 1863, a year that sits at the heart of one of America's most tumultuous times, the Civil War. Picture a nation divided, not just by geography but by fundamental beliefs and ways of life. The Union, or the North, fought under the banner of preserving the United States and abolishing slavery. In contrast, the Confederacy, comprising 11 southern states, was determined to maintain its independence and the institution of slavery. This was more than just a military conflict, it was a clash of economies, societies, and ideologies. The North, with its industrial might, sought to blockade the South, cutting off supplies and crippling the Confederate war effort. Meanwhile, the South, with its strong agricultural base, relied on cotton exports and hoped for foreign intervention to sustain its fight for survival. In this chess game of move and countermove, control of strategic locations became crucial. Enter Sabine Pass, a narrow body of water on the Texas-Louisiana border. It was not just a geographic point on the map but a lifeline for the Confederacy. Through it ran supplies, arms, and hopes of sustaining the Southern cause. Its importance was magnified by the Union's Anaconda Plan, which aimed to squeeze the life out of the Confederacy by blockading its coasts and controlling the Mississippi River. And it's here, at Sabine Pass, where our story unfolds. The Union, understanding the pass's strategic value, plotted an ambitious assault to capture it and then march into Texas. Texas was not just another state, it was vast, resource-rich, and crucially, an open door to Mexico, where the Confederacy could circumvent the Union blockade. The stage was set for a confrontation that would not only test military might and strategy but also the resolve and ingenuity of those involved. It's a backdrop of a nation at war with itself, with every river, pass, and town becoming a potential flashpoint for conflict and change. And amidst this national upheaval, personal stories of bravery, sacrifice, and ingenuity were about to unfold. The Battle of Sabine Pass wasn't just a military engagement, it was a moment that would capture the complexity of war, the human spirit, and the fight for what each side believed was a just cause. Imagine for a moment the Union and the Confederacy not as armies, but as players in a high-stakes chess game. But instead of pawns and knights, they had ships and cannons. And in this version of chess, the pieces don't politely take turns. No, they blast each other to smithereens. Right you are Chuck. And as our chess game heated up, the Union, always looking for a checkmate move, eyed Sabine Pass like it was the king itself. Their plan? Launch a major offensive to capture the pass, march into Texas, and basically invite themselves to dinner without so much as an RSVP. The Union's strategy was part of the Anaconda plan, which, despite sounding like a bad 90s action movie, was actually a strategy to blockade the South and squeeze it into submission. The capture of Sabine Pass was crucial. It was like trying to win a game of Monopoly by owning all the railroads. Control the pass, and you control the South's ability to receive supplies from abroad. Meanwhile, the Confederacy wasn't just sitting around knitting socks. They knew the Union's game plan. Sabine Pass was their front porch, and they weren't about to let the Union march up without a fight. Despite being undermanned and outgunned, they prepared to defend their turf with a tenacity that would make a honey badger nod in respect. The commander tasked with this David versus Goliath challenge was Lieutenant Richard W. Dowling. With a name like that, you'd expect him to be more at home in a Dickens novel than a Confederate fort. But Dowling was no ordinary man. He was about to turn Fort Griffin, with its few cannons and handful of men, into an impenetrable stronghold. And let's not forget the Union fleet, steaming towards Sabine Pass with confidence. They had numbers, they had ships, and they had a plan. What they didn't have was the element of surprise. Because in this chess game, everyone could see the board. So, as the Union prepared its pieces for what they hoped would be a decisive strike, and Dowling sharpened his metaphorical chess skills, and literal cannons, 
the stage was set for a confrontation that would defy the odds, challenge strategic minds, and, if nothing else, make for an excellent story. And with that, the chess pieces were in motion, the board was set, and the game at Sabine Pass was about to begin. A battle that would prove, once again, that in war, sometimes the underdog has a few tricks up their sleeve. Picture this, a bright September day in 1863, the stage is set for what's expected to be a one-sided showdown at Sabine Pass. The Union, with its mighty fleet, looks ready to play the role of Goliath, thinking they're about to squash a lone David, or in this case, a small Confederate force led by the surprisingly formidable Lieutenant Richard W. Dowling. And Dowling's force at Fort Griffin wasn't exactly the A-team of military might. We're talking about a ragtag band of rebels, who, if rumors are to be believed, were more familiar with the business end of a beer bottle than a cannon. But underestimating them was about to become the Union's biggest blunder. The Union commanders, with their superior numbers, must have felt like they were bringing a cannon to a knife fight. Little did they know, Dowling and his men had turned their modest fort into a veritable death trap for ships, ready to prove that size isn't everything. As the Union fleet advanced, Dowling's men waited, as calm as cats watching a laser pointer. Then, when the Union was within striking distance, those calm cats turned into tigers. The cannons of Fort Griffin roared to life, and the battle for Sabine Pass truly began. Imagine the shock on the Union sailors' faces as what they expected to be a leisurely cruise into Texas turned into a nightmare. Dowling's cannons, operated with the precision of a Swiss watch, found their marks again and again. The narrow pass, which the Union had thought of as merely a geographical inconvenience, became their undoing. It's like showing up to a gunfight with what you think are the biggest guns, only to find out the other guy's bullets are guided missiles. Dowling's small force, utilizing their intimate knowledge of the pass and superior positioning, turned their limited resources into a devastating advantage. The Union fleet, caught in the equivalent of a maritime traffic jam, could neither advance effectively nor retreat gracefully. It was like watching a bad dance routine, where every step forward was met with a cannonball instead of applause. And as the smoke cleared, the unthinkable had happened. The David of the Confederacy had not just stood up to the Union Goliath, they had sent them packing with their tails between their legs. The battle, expected to be a footnote in the Union's grand plans, became a legend of defiance and strategy. The aftermath was a mix of disbelief and admiration. The Union, with its eyes on a quick victory, found themselves outmaneuvered and outgunned by a force they had underestimated. And Dowling? He became more than just a commander, he became a symbol of the unexpected power of determination, strategy, and, let's be honest, really good cannon aim. So, the Battle of Sabine Pass turned from what many thought would be a dull skirmish into an action-packed tale of underdog triumph, proving once again that in the heat of battle, it's not always the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. Or in this case, the size of the cannonballs in the fort. In every epic tale, there are heroes whose deeds transcend the ordinary, becoming the stuff of legend. At Sabine Pass, those heroes wore Confederate gray and were led by a man whose name would become synonymous with unexpected victory, Lieutenant Richard Dick Dowling. Dowling, an Irish immigrant turned Confederate officer, wasn't your typical military hero. Before the war, he was better known for running a successful saloon than for battlefield tactics. Yet, on that September day, he turned a fort that probably had more in common with his bar into the scene of one of the Civil War's most astonishing upsets. And let's not forget Dowling's Band of Merry Men, a group of underdogs so gritty they could make sandpaper look smooth. These weren't the seasoned veterans of countless battles, these were men who, under Dowling's leadership, transformed from barroom brawlers into cannon-wielding warriors with a cause. When the Union fleet sailed into their sights, Dowling and his crew didn't just defend Sabine Pass, they turned it into a shooting gallery. With their keen aim and unyielding spirit, they managed to stop the Union in its tracks capturing two ships and ensuring their place in history. Imagine the scene, Dowling, standing atop the fort, directing fire like a conductor with an orchestra, each cannon blast a note in a symphony of defiance. And his men, loading and firing with the precision of a well-oiled machine, probably fueled by the same determination that once made them formidable foes in a bar fight. The aftermath of the battle saw Dowling and his crew celebrated as heroes. Their victory wasn't just a military success, it was a morale booster for the Confederacy. 
A reminder that passion and strategy could level the playing field against a larger force. Dowling himself became something of a celebrity, the kind of guy who, if you were around today, would probably have a beer named after him. His leadership and tactical acumen at Sabine Pass showed that sometimes, the most unlikely person can change the course of history. And while the heroes of Sabine Pass may have returned to their lives, their legend lives on, a testament to the power of determination, ingenuity, and maybe just a bit of that Irish luck. They didn't just win a battle, they became enduring symbols of what can be achieved against the odds. When it comes to the Battle of Sabine Pass, the tactics and technology on display were less about having the latest gadgets and more about using what you've got with a dash of genius. It's like showing up to a high-tech drone fight with a really, really accurate slingshot, and winning. Exactly Chuck. Lieutenant Dowling didn't have an arsenal of cutting-edge war machines at his disposal. Instead, he had something arguably more powerful, intimate knowledge of the terrain and a cunning plan. It's like playing a home game with the crowd on your side, if the crowd was armed with cannons. Speaking of those cannons, let's talk technology, Civil War style. Dowling's men manned six cannons at Fort Griffin, which might not sound like much until you realize they were essentially the sniper rifles of their day, at least in the hands of Dowling sharpshooters. These cannons, positioned perfectly to cover the narrow pass, turned what was essentially a bottleneck in the water into a death trap for the Union fleet. The genius here wasn't just in the placement of the cannons, but in the precision with which they were used. Dowling trained his men to aim and fire with such accuracy that it probably felt to the Union like those cannons had homing devices. Imagine trying to navigate through a narrow pass while someone's lobbing cannonballs at you with the accuracy of a modern-day marksman. Not exactly a walk in the park. And let's not forget the use of signals and observation. Dowling and his crew utilized a system of lookouts and signals to communicate and coordinate their fire effectively. In an age before radios and smartphones, this was their version of instant messaging, only instead of emojis, they were sending cannonballs. Then there's the Union's approach. Armed with the latest in naval technology and a fleet that outnumbered the defenders, they were confident. Maybe too confident. It's like bringing the newest iPhone to a fight where the other guy knows every shortcut and hack of an older model. Sometimes, the tech is only as good as the strategy behind it. In the end, the tactics and technology of the Battle of Sabine Pass tell a story of how ingenuity, knowledge of the environment, and precision can overcome numerical and technological superiority. Dowling and his men turned their limited resources into a master class in defensive warfare, proving that sometimes, the best tech is a well-placed cannon and a well-thought-out plan. So, the next time you think you need the latest and greatest to win, remember the Battle of Sabine Pass. It's not about what you have, it's about how you use it. And if you can use it to make your enemies wonder if you've got their playbook, well, you're halfway to victory. The dust settles, the smoke clears, and what are we left with after the Battle of Sabine Pass? A story that's part history, part legend, and a whole lot of did that really just happen? It's like the end of a magic trick where you're still trying to figure out how the magician pulled the rabbit out of the hat. And let's talk about the rabbit, or in this case, the impact of this unlikely Confederate victory. First off, it was a massive morale booster for the South. Imagine being on the losing team and suddenly, out of nowhere, you score a win that nobody saw coming. It's like hitting a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth when you were down by three runs. Not to mention, it threw a wrench into the Union's plans. The North was gearing up for what they thought would be an easy win, a quick jaunt into Texas. Instead, they got a lesson in humility and the tactical genius of Lieutenant Dowling. It's the military equivalent of tripping on the red carpet in front of the paparazzi. And let's not forget the strategic significance. The Union's failure to capture Sabine Pass meant Texas remained a lifeline for the Confederacy, a condorit for supplies, and a morale-boosting symbol of resistance. It's like keeping the back door open when everyone else thought you'd bolted it shut. On a broader scale, the battle underscored the importance of leadership, strategy, and local knowledge. Dowling and his men showed that underestimating your opponent based on numbers alone is a risky business. It's the classic tale of David and Goliath, only this time Goliath forgot to check if David was a sharpshooter with a cannon. And while the Union licked its wounds, the Confederacy celebrated Dowling as a hero, a beacon of hope in a time of despair. 
His statue in Houston stands testament to the legacy of Sabine Pass, a reminder that sometimes, the underdog's bite is way worse than its bark. But let's be real, the battle didn't change the ultimate outcome of the war. The Union would eventually prevail, but the story of Sabine Pass remains a bright spot in the otherwise grim narrative of the Civil War. It's like finding a $20 bill in the couch cushions when you're down on your luck, it doesn't change everything, but it sure does brighten your day. In the end, the impact and aftermath of Sabine Pass teach us lessons about resilience, strategic acumen, and the unpredictable nature of war. It's a chapter in history that reminds us that sometimes, the most significant victories come from the most unexpected places. So, as we wrap up this tale of Sabine Pass, let's remember it not just as a battle but as a story of determination, strategy, and a little bit of that rebel spirit. It's a testament to the fact that in history, as in life, the underdog can have its day. Unlike many battles of the Civil War, which left fields strewn with casualties on both sides, Sabine Pass was a miraculous exception for the Confederates. In an almost storybook twist, Dowling and his men emerged without a single casualty, a rarity in the brutal conflict that was tearing America apart. On the flip side, the Union forces weren't quite as fortunate. Their ambition met with a swift and costly rebuttal. The Union's losses included not just the pride of their naval might but also tangible assets, two gunboats captured, over 350 soldiers taken prisoner, and the invaluable time and resources spent on a failed campaign. It was, to put it mildly, not their best day out. But the casualties of Sabine Pass weren't just measured in men lost or ships captured. The real wound was to the Union's strategy and morale. They had underestimated their opponent, a mistake that echoed back to their high command, reminding everyone involved that underdogs bite hard when cornered. Now, let's talk legacy. The Battle of Sabine Pass punched well above its weight in terms of historical impact. It became a symbol of Confederate defiance, a beacon of hope in a sea of despair for the South. Lieutenant Richard Dowling and his ragtag band of defenders were celebrated as heroes, embodying the David vs. Goliath spirit that resonates through history. Their legacy extends beyond the annals of military history. Dowling's strategic genius and the improbable victory at Sabine Pass have been studied by military strategists and historians as a masterclass in defensive warfare and the importance of leadership, terrain, and morale. Moreover, the battle's legacy is cemented in monuments, in the naming of streets, and in the collective memory of the region. Dowling's statue in Houston stands not just as a tribute to the man but as a reminder of the battle's significance in the larger tapestry of the Civil War. It's a story that captures the imagination, a tale of how strategy, courage, and a bit of luck can alter the course of events. And let's not forget the broader lesson of Sabine Pass, that history is full of surprises, that the expected outcome is not always the one that comes to pass. It's a narrative that challenges us to look deeper into the stories we think we know, to find the human element, the strategic decisions and the sheer unpredictability of life. The casualties and legacy of Sabine Pass remind us of the complexities of war and the human spirit's resilience. It's a chapter from the past that continues to inspire and instruct, proving that even in the darkest times, there are stories of hope, strategy, and unexpected victory. So, as we sign off on this episode of the History AI Podcast, let's carry forward the lessons and legacies of Sabine Pass, a reminder of what's possible when courage meets opportunity. And that, dear listeners, brings us to the end of today's journey back to Sabine Pass. It's been a ride through history, filled with strategy, courage, and a few surprises along the way. But before we close the book on this episode, we want to extend a heartfelt thank you to all of you tuning in. Your support turns our passion for history into these audio adventures, and for that, we're eternally grateful. And if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to dive into our evergreen catalog of past episodes. Whether you're into tales of ancient empires, unsolved mysteries, or pivotal moments in modern history, there's a story waiting for you in the History AI Podcast archives. Each episode is a time machine, ready to whisk you away to another era, another battle, or a groundbreaking discovery. So, if you're hungry for more, our past episodes are there to satisfy your historical appetite. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and share the History AI Podcast with friends and fellow history buffs. Your five-star reviews help us reach more listeners, grow our community, and keep bringing you the stories from the past that continue to shape our world. And we're always eager to hear from you. Got a topic you're dying to learn more about? 
drop us a suggestion on social media. Your curiosity might just spark our next episode. Plus, check out our merchandise. It's a great way to take a piece of history with you, and every purchase supports the podcast, allowing us to bring even more episodes to life. Find the link in our show notes. And as a thank you to our listeners, we're offering a 10% discount on your first purchase. Just use the code The History AI Podcast, all one word, at checkout. So, until next time, keep the past alive by exploring our episodes, old and new. Who knows what you'll discover next? Thank you for joining us on the History AI Podcast. Here's to many more historical journeys together. Until then, stay curious, stay passionate, and most importantly, keep exploring history. Looking for the perfect way to show appreciation for the incredible mom in your life? Discover Exhausted Moms, a coloring journey to relaxation and humor, the coloring book that speaks directly to the heart of motherhood. Gift her an escape into pages of laughter, empowerment, and moments of tranquility. With Exhausted Moms, she'll find a blend of whimsical illustrations and inspiring quotes that celebrate her daily triumphs and challenges. Crafted with love from images I created for the mother of my children, each page offers a space for creativity and relaxation, a reminder that she's doing an amazing job, even on the toughest days. Give the gift of laughter, peace, and recognition. Exhausted Moms isn't just a coloring book, it's a hug, a nod of understanding, and a token of appreciation for everything she does. Surprise her with Exhausted Moms today and watch her face light up with joy. Because every mom deserves a moment to herself, wrapped in the colors of love and support.